Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I've spent the day researching and getting more information on the BLM movement and um, who they are as a organization and I want to share a little bit with you. Duke and Duchess to produce Black Lives Matter film. This is part of um, one of the things they want to produce with Netflix but will it include their witchcraft, voodoo, and human and animal sacrifices? All right, thank you for watching everybody and uh, let's go ahead and get started. I found a lot and I'm going to try to see if I can go through what I felt was most important. Report Meghan Markle plans Netflix doc on Marxist Black's Life, Black Lives Matter founder. Alicia Garza, Opal Tometi, and Patrice Colors in the center are the three founders, and each of these ladies have uh, self-confessed to being part of um, voodoo rituals, which include sacrificing uh, fruits, um, uh, tobacco, animal sacrifices, and uh, in doing research on this, there's also young children or human sacrifices that are done, not saying they practice that part, but that's part of their religious belief, and we'll get into that in just a moment. So a lot of people don't realize the Black Lives Matter movement was really started uh, after Trayvon Martin by another gentleman, and these ladies swoop in and decide that they want to use the BLM movement um, during the pandemic for George Floyd and others, and, and they want to continue to push uh, their beliefs, and they say that their movement is actually a spiritual movement, and you'll see in just a moment a little bit more about what that spiritual movement is. So again, this is your Duke and Duchess of Sussex that plan to produce videos, keep in mind as you're watching this, about these ladies and the one in the center, Patrice Colors, in particular. Black Lives Matter Foundation has seen a surge in donations, but the money isn't going to the movement. The goal of the Sound Alike Santa Clarita-based foundation started by a music producer is to create unity between people and the police by Brittany Martin, written June 16th. In recent weeks, millions of Americans have been moved to donate money to organizations working to promote civil rights and racial justice. But now, some are discovering that, in their well-intentioned haste to contribute cash, some of the funds may have gone to organizations that aren't quite what they're thought. They may be the case with the Black Lives Matter Foundation, a small Santa Clarita-based organization that is not affiliated with the organizers of the recent demonstrations. Some speculate that at least some portion of the 4.35 million raised for the foundation since June 1st may have been intended to go to the movement organizers, formerly known as the Black Lives Matter Global Network, or to local groups helping demonstrators and those on the front line. But donors failed to fully vet this organization because millions of dollars in donations were received or sent to them by Apple, Google, Microsoft, and were all initially committed to the foundation, but then they retracted upon a closer examination of the group. Seems as though Megan and Harry have not fully researched the group. The Santa Clarita group is improperly using our name, a spokesperson for Black Lives Matter Global Network told BuzzFeed. Music producer Robert Ray Barnes, the founder and sole employee of the Black Lives Matter Foundation, disagrees and is telling it is the network improperly using his intellectual property. It appears there is a lot of scamming going on. But how can it have to do with me, Barnes said to BuzzFeed. They took my name. I own that name. I haven't stolen anything from them. The Black Lives Matter movement was founded under the name by Patrice Colors, 
Alicia Garza and Opal Tometi in 2013 and came into wide recognition in August 2014 during demonstrations in Ferguson, Missouri. However, the founders did not immediately take the step of setting up a 501c3 with the IRS. That means a, a charitable organization. In May of 2015, Barnes took the initiative himself to file the paperwork for the name Black Lives Matter Foundation. Black Lives Matter co-founder wants Hollywood to show up for the cause. In the wake of the sports strike that started at NBA and quickly spread to the WNBA, Major League Baseball and Soccer, and the NHL, Black Lives Matter co-founder and TV writer Patrice Galores is calling on Hollywood top players to follow suit in support of Jacob Blake, who was paralyzed earlier in August after being shot in the back seven times by a Kenosha, Wisconsin police officer. Uh, they also didn't say what he was doing and how exactly that came about being, but uh, they're not going to report that part for you. I think it's time for talent, writers, executives, the Guild, and the SAG, that's the uh, Screen Actors Guild Awards, to show up for Black Lives Matter as well. So they want this to be everybody on everybody's buzzword, and this is what everybody and every company needs to be saying, and God forbid somebody doesn't stand up or go along with it. Colors told The Hollywood Reporter, join this strike. Now is the time our movement is really looking uh, to unions to step in in a particular way and say, we're going to hold back on allowing for the exportation and the denigration of black communities to continue under our watch. I think Hollywood can really show up for this movement. Colors, a writer for Freeform's Good Trouble, says, and that she and other Black Life Movement advocates are talking to the entertainment industry about how to continue movement to confront police violence against black people that erupted with the killing of George Floyd in May. People are tired of having to say the same thing over and over and not seeing the change that we deserve from either party. Frankly, Color says, I think the work that we're up against right now is to ensure that we can get Trump out of office, but also ensure that we can get the Democratic Party to truly create policies that will make sure that black people are protected from vigilantes and from police torture. Guys, this has nothing to do with the Democrats. And this is what Meghan Markle's doing, and she's trying to push the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party, whether I'm not going to get into politics and what my belief is, uh, but um, it's always been my research and what I've seen is they tend to create um, platforms uh, or care for them that will actually hold them down instead of enabling them to advance their their causes. A lot of people under the misconception that the Democrats do so much for uh, people of um, different races. But if you actually go and look and investigate and do some research, you'll see that that's not the case. But I'm not going to talk politics. I'm just going to stick with what we've got. Herschel Walker slams BLM movement, challenges the NFL owners and players who support these trained Marxists. He says, Herschel Walker posted a video on his Twitter sharing his thoughts about it. In the video, the former Georgia Bulldog and Heisman Trophy winner of the NFL, uh, great, asked the professional football community, is this who you're supporting? A trained Marxist tells you that they're anti-government, anti-American, anti-Christian, anti-everything. I have finally woke up, he says on Twitter, and I am shaking you, America. As Maya said, when someone tells you who they are, you better believe them. So he's telling you he once um, believed um, that maybe it was a good cause or was a Democrat, and he's done his research. It says, we are super versed on sort of ideological theories, and I think that we're really tired tried to do this, build a movement that could be utilized by many, many black folk. Color says in the interview with uh, Jared Ball of the Real Fake News Network, and these are her two co-founders, uh, Alicia Garza and Patrice Colors, um, and says to themselves, they are trained Marxists. Black Lives Matter run by Marxist witches, says doctor who believes in demon sperm and hydrochloroquine. Uh, and uh, queen, this is what they were talking about using for COVID. BLM is full of witchcraft. Emmanuel tweeted alongside a YouTuber that cut together interview clips that Black Lives Matter. Melina Abdullah and Patrice Colors, where they spoke about spirituality and its role in the movement. 
the, the activists specifically discussed its importance as a tie to ancestry. Black people are following witches that are invoking the dead to do their work of chaos. The lives of black people matter, but BLM is run by three Marxist witches, Emmanuel tweeted. Emmanuel's tweet continued. The final sentiment seemed to reference Patrice Cullors, Alicia Garza, and Opal Tomete, who are credited as organization's original co-founders. The Time magazine cover, as it appeared in the publication's 100 Women of the Year issue in March, is included in the YouTube video Emmanuel cited on Twitter. The video airs similar claims about witchcraft. Guys, look and follow uh, Stella Emmanuel and uh, medical doctor on Twitter, and you will see what she's uncovered. BLM is full witchcraft. Black people are following witches that are invoking the dead to do the work of chaos, collecting money, but they are not helping blacks. The lives of black people matter, but BLM is run by three Marxist witches. Blacks need to w- uh, black people need to wake up, according to Stella Emanuel. Do witches run Black Lives Matter? Um, And maybe I'm sharing too much, but we become very intimate with the spirits that we call on regularly, right? Like each of them seems to have a different presence and personality. You know, I laugh a lot with Waikisha, you know, and I didn't meet her in her body, right? I met her through this work. It's it's a it's a very important practice. Um, hashtags are for us are way more than a hashtag. It is um, literally almost resurrecting a spirit so they can work through us to get the work that we need Did to you get hear done. The I started to feel spirits to work personally connected mm-hmm. and responsible and accountable to them, um, both from a deeply political place, but also from a deeply spiritual place and um always you know and 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 my tradition you offer things that that your loved one who passed away would want you know um whether it's like honey or tobacco things like that and that's it's so important not just for us to be in direct relationship to our people who've passed but also for them to know they've we've remembered them um, I, I believe so many of them work through us. Black Lives Matter uh, is ran by three witches Bishop Larry Gates. who are lesbian witches. Alicia Garza, Patrice Cullors, and Opa Tometi. She's of Nigerian descent. They are all three are part of of the Black Boule Seeker Society. And there are witches, they're warlocks in the entire spiritual dogma or doctrine of Black Lives Matter is from the West African religion called Odu Ifa, capital O-D-U, then spacing capital I-F-A. But over 3,000 different religions in Africa or Akibalon is rooted in witchcraft and divination. I feel like in our in our tradition and our traditional practice and people who practice you know traditions from West African um, places, uh, one of the big things is remembering your ancestors. And I feel like part of the the story uh, <clears throat> in the building of BLM was about remembering and and remembering our people not based off of a white supremacist memory, which would be about, you know, slandering them and putting their names in the newspaper and showing their mug shots and, but instead remembering them from the place that their mothers and their fathers and their family would want us to remember them in, even if we didn't know them personally. So these three witches, uh, Alicia Garza, Opa Tometi, okay, and Patrice Cullors, are using the psyop of the witchcraft religion of Odu Aifa, which concentrates on six Teen points of demonic possession and demonic influence through demonic performance of what libations because the term libation means the liquid of darkness when we come out into the streets listen to these families and we pray you know the first thing that we do when we hear of a murder is we come out we pray we pour a libation we built with the community where um, the person's life was stolen. 
And it took almost a year for me to realize trying to resurrect that the dead. this movement is much more than a racial and social justice movement. At its core, it's a spiritual movement. At its because core, it's a Because we're literally standing on spilled that, blood, right? Yeah. And you can't pretend like that's work that's just like some organizing work. That's, you know, that's some serious stuff, right? They that's give libations, they pour liquid, what they say, unto the Praise gods the of Africa. It's all built on witchcraft. When we say the names, right? So we speak their names, These we are their say her name, say They're their names. We do that names. all the time, that you kind of invoke that spirit and then those spirits actually become present with you, right? So then Black Lives Matter has 16 chapters in the United States and in Canada, which each chapter represents a name of a god or goddess in the Eiffel religion called Odu Eiffel, which has 16 points, 16 cities, chapters states. of demonic possession. Black Lives Matter, they're operating through both omnikinesis and telekinesis. It's witchcraft. Wherever they go to create mayhem and destruction, they send witches and every um, satellite head Every person of these 16 chapters of Black Lives Matter, they are a witch and a warlock. So with Black Lives Matter, they have molded themselves after a serpentine psychology. All three of these women's women are witches. They're warlocks. Spirituality is at the center of Black Lives Matter. Um, and I think that's not just for us. I feel like so many... Um, leaders and so many organizers um, are deeply engaged in, in a pretty in, um, important spiritual practice. I don't think I could I could do this work without that. This I don't think I could do it as long as I've done it and as consistently. Um, this is it feels evil, dark like forces. If I didn't do that, it would be antithetical vision. to this work. To defeat Black Lives Matter, to defeat the ANC, you can't defeat these organizations through the barrel of a gun. You can only defeat the ANC in Black Lives Matter through spiritual warfare. In the Bible, both the Old and New Testament, it's clear that when we die we no longer have cognitive thought, or, obviously, the ability to communicate, as if we are asleep. But man dieth and wasteth away, man giveth up the ghost, and where is he? As the waters fail from the sea, and the flood decayeth and drieth up, so man lieth down, and riseth not, till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. Job 14, 10 through 12. We don't so, raise the dead. if the Only founders and that. leaders of Black Lives Matter are in fact communicating and speaking with spirits or entities, who are they talking to? Demons? Or are they just talking to themselves? Whether actual contact is made or not, these sort of practices are forbidden by God, as clearly described in Deuteronomy 18, 10 through 12. There shall not be found among you anyone that useth divination, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. Again, is Black Lives Matter do. run by witches, or just crazy bitches? This is Brian Wilson Excuse with Infowars.com. American Right to Life, the BLM, a connection to witchcraft. Patrice Culler, spirituality is at the center of Black Lives Matter. You heard it in the video. To find out what kind of spirituality, excuse me, I'm sorry, don't crazy car going by. Listen to Abraham Hamilton III, host of the Hamilton Corner, present colors in her own word. BLM is more than just a Marxist pro-abortion organization. These are the founder's words. And then there's the scriptures again. 
Go on, do your own research. I'm not asking you to believe me. I'm not asking you to take my word for it. I did my research. I've been researching this for several months, and I've um, researched it further today, and it goes on and on. Listen to what people say. Listen to what they've learned about it. Black Lives Matter deeply aligned with witchcraft. Look at the signs they hold up. Witches against racism. Hex, white, supremacy, everything. They're dressed like witches. Black Lives Matter deeply align with witchcraft. It goes on. Talk about it more. Uh, read these articles. It's heavily involved with witchcraft. According to a recent broadcast by American Countdown, host and high-profile defense attorney Robert Barnes. Barnes states that the BLM co-founder Patrice Cullors openly practices the occult religion, IFA, an American system of divination. You heard what this uh, Bible scripture said, that uh, against all divination and listening to uh, people who profess to be witches. According to Wikipedia, which defines divination as an occultic standardized process or ritual, Wilkie's bio of color states that she developed an interest in the Nigerian religious tradition of IFA, and I'll tell you more about that, incorporating its rituals into political. go over another sorry hey guys what's going on I want you guys to share this video to anyone you know share this video folks this needs to get out there okay because I've seen a lot of churches that are pushing this black lives matter nonsense okay and I was never falling for this black lives matter foolishness okay and I'm a black guy saying this Let's B. listen w. to this article. Arnold. Christians, pay attention. Pay attention. Share this video. This article says Black Lives Matter deeply aligned with witchcraft. And this article is posted recently. It was posted in June 2020. Let's read what it says. Black Lives Matter is heavily involved, heavily involved with witchcraft. According to a recent broadcast by American Countdown host and high-profile defense attorney Robert Burns, so he's an attorney, he did his research. Burns states that Black Lives Matter co-founder Patrice Collars openly practices the occult religion IFA. Okay, if you guys don't know what IFA is. Let me go on. Black Lives Matter co-founder who admitted she's a trained Marxist now confesses to practicing rich witchcraft September the 15th, 2020 by uh, News Punch. Baxter Dimitri. Look at some of these posts. She calls for it to be a spiritual movement. It already is. This is the war in spirit world that has spilled over into the physical world and demons are manifesting in the communist anarchist Democrats. And look, read the two scriptures there. I'll read the second. Leviticus twenty twenty seven. A man also or woman that hath a familiar spirit or that is a wizard shall surely be put to death. They shall be stoned them with stones and their blood pours out. Jay Greenberg. Black Lives Matter co-founder Patrice Culler says witchcraft and spirit should be introduced into the Black Lives Movement. Cullors, who previously declared that BLM was founded by trained Marxists, has admitted the movement is not just about racial and social justice. Witchcraft gives one the freedom to pick and choose who is to divide, who is divine and worthy of worship. There are many deities, gods or goddesses, to choose from. So for simplicity, witchcraft is the worship of Mother Earth, awareness of the cycles of the universe, and becoming in tune with nature around them. Many look for inspiration and guidance in myth, ancient religion, and even science fiction. Many are upset that witchcraft and paganism are listed with and considered the same as Satanism, but it is. They will tell you that it's not Satanism. They are both completely different. Witchcraft and paganism are earth religions, and they don't worship the evil deities. Their law and ye harm no one, and 
and do what thou wilt. The same as the Satanists, which means they can do whatever we like as long as it does not harm anyone, including themselves. The spells are not little conjurations cooked up in a cauldron with toads and the like. The whole spell ceremony is supposedly to open up the unconscious to realize one's hopes and dreams and what you want to achieve. Does it sound like uh, somebody we know has been uh, dabbling in this, talking to them? You know, uh, it used to be said that um, uh, by different people speaking out that they thought Megan and her mother was into uh, witchcraft. Who knows? Maybe she's a part of this. We always thought that... Um, you know, it was said, allegedly, that Megan had put a spell on Harry. IFA is a system of divination and religion of the Yor Yoruba people. It also refers to the verses of the literary corpus that is known as Odu IFA. IFU, IFA, Yobu religion is practiced not just among the Yorubas in Nigeria, but also throughout West Africa, the Americans and the Canary Islands. God in IFA, creation in the African divination systems. IFA is monothestatic. We believe in a single creative force known as Olodumare. The universe and its entirety springs from this single source. IFA is one of an interrated, interrelated network of religions with African roots, including voodoo, Santeria and Santo, excuse me, Sango baptism that appears to be gaining popularity in the United States, including the state of Maryland, as some African Americans seek a spiritual experience firmly grounded in their own cultural heris, um, heritage. And you can look at videos on this and it'll tell you everything that it means. IFA is one of an interrelated networks. I think I just talked about that. Oh, excuse me. And I think. Excuse me, I got a menu in there. Yeah. Let's see. West African religions like Ifa and Voodoo are on the rise in Maryland as practitioners connect with their roots. And you can go back and look at these videos and it'll show you how they're laying out fruit, tobacco, um, and they do animal sacrifices. And it's also been said that um, they do human sacrifices. Giving gratitude and thanks by um, offering, offering them foods, Fruits and um, honey, wine. What else did we get? Molasses. Molasses and pennies. And pennies as a way to say thank you for all that they have blessed us with. I practice Ifa Arisha. It's also the traditional name is Isheshe Agbaye. It predates uh, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism yes. by 5,000 years. Look at BLM's leftist agenda has little to do with black lives. Uh, this is by the Heritage Foundation if you'd like to see more. Antifa. I know they're always talking about Antifa. It's a political protest movement comprising autonomous groups affiliated by their militant opposition to fascism and other forms of extreme white right-wing ideology. And these are the ones that they talk about being the Marxists and that they come in and that they say that they're standing up against um, uh, racists and uh, Nazis and all of this, but they do it with uh, violence, physical violence. Nazis and Klansmen in Charlottesville were peaceful, but not all of them. In their midst was a sometimes very violent group of protesters that call themselves Antifa, known to not only clash with bigots, but also sometimes with police and occasionally storefronts. At least two journalists in Virginia were assaulted by violent counter-protesters over the weekend, including this cameraman from the Richmond CBS affiliate. CNN's Sarah Gannon now takes us inside Antifa and shows us this group like you've never seen it before. It's 6 a.m. in Portland, Oregon, and we're headed to a bar with blacked out windows. They wanted to meet us really early in the morning because they're concerned about a lot of people being around. We are meeting members of the Rose City Antifa, short for anti-fascist. This group's main goal is to disrupt neo-Nazis and white supremacists, okay, but also take on government and capitalism. Antifa is any group that's willing to stand up against fascists by any means necessary. By any means necessary, they say, can mean outing a white nationalist at their work or to their neighbors. Or, as we've seen recently, violence, fires, property damage, hand-to-hand -hand combat. 
at protests across the country. Explain to me the reasoning behind fighting. You have to make it so unpalatable to be doing white supremacist organizing that they no longer want to do that. And historically, that's what's worked. You have to put your body in the way and you have to make it speak in a language that they understand and sometimes that is violence. They're There's saying no uh, for their movement in order to make it work, there are they the have US to invoke a violence. One organization. Most are local groups that recruit and communicate through social media. But experts who track these organizations... That's enough. I'll let you guys research it on your own. Know when to lead and know when to listen. Mm -hmm. Listen to and Harry and Megan. Problem, the two key things in this moment that I think people, that distinction of knowing when, like, you need to be on the right side of this, as we all do, but you also need to know that in being on the right side of it sometimes just involves listening and having an understanding of what's at play. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, who are vice president and president of the Queen's Commonwealth Trust, recently spoke with young leaders from the organization, and they discussed justice, fairness, and equality. A lot of it as well is in that self-reflection, it's acknowledging whatever mistakes we've all made, right? So if we look at the Commonwealth, and I know part of the conversation we're going to explore later on is looking at the history of that, but if you start on that macro level, you also have to look on a more micro level with each of us and individually. What have we done in our past that we put our hand up? And I think this is a moment of reckoning where so many people go, you know what, I need to own that. Maybe I didn't do the right thing there. I knew what I knew. However, now it's time to reset in a different way. And I think both of us, it's part of the conversation we've had quite a bit in our, in our calls over the last few weeks surrounding the Black Lives Matter movement for everyone to be a part of this conversation. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex also mm. spoke about the Black Lives Matter movement. The first time ever, thanks to the Black Lives Matter movement, that doesn't have a single address, doesn't have a single leader. It is a movement that is swept across the world that finally everybody who knows and recognizes the wrong in this for, for years and years, years, decades, hundreds of years gone by, that this is the moment when people are starting to be listened to. The former suit. Harry and Meghan don't have a clue what they're talking about, that they don't even understand what Black Lives Matter is. He's talking about a race in the past, past and apologizing for that. Meghan talks about knowing when to lead and when to follow. Uh, she needs to know what it is that she's trying to lead. This is just like when she was a duchess and the courtier said, you know, she wanted to hit the ground running. And he said, well, it's great that you've got the enthusiasm to do that, but where are you running to? And when you get there, what are you going to say? She's still doing the same thing. She wants to be out there. She wants to be part of the woke community, but she doesn't want to do the research and see exactly what that is. But yet she wants to make a documentary film and praise Patrice and these other women for this movement that they never started, that was started before them, but they jumped on and took it into their own direction. Harry and Meghan, you're really sad. Duke and Duchess to produce Black Lives Matter film. Will it include the witchcraft, the voodoo, and their sacrifices? Guys, thank you for watching. I appreciate it very much. Um, I hope that uh, you enjoyed this and you learned something from it. And uh, we'll just um, keep on uh, learning and studying. Share your thoughts with me and what you may have learned. And um, let me know if um, 